Okay, so I have played a ton of Mecha Break so far. Mecha Break is a 6v6 multiplayer mech game that allows you to choose from diverse mechs, customize appearances, and battle colossal war machines on treacherous terrain. There is a mech design for any playstyle. The different types of mechs are Assault, Melee, Sniper, Recon, and Support mechs. Currently, my go-to mechs are any of the melee types, especially Woken. This mech is equipped with a battle axe. His combo attack is pretty satisfying as well. I can drop on an enemy, box them in with my stasis field, send boomerangs at them while unleashing whirlwind with my heavy battle axe. So if you enjoy brawling like me, they've got those mechs. Conversely, if you enjoy long range sniping, they've got mechs for that. If you enjoy aerial combat, they've got mechs for that. Want to play support or tank? Well, you can do that too. This game has so, so, so many mechs and don't worry, we will touch on a few of these mechs in a bit, but before that, let's get an understanding of the game and the player UI. When you first boot up the game, you are thrown into the character creator, which is quite complex. Now, character creators aren't really my jam, so I won't dive deep into everything you can do in here, but I know tons of people love spending sometimes hours in the character creator, so it's definitely worth mentioning and pointing out that there are tons of options to make your character extremely unique and stand out. After you create your character, you begin a little PvE tutorial that will teach you the basics of the game and its combat system. There's a cool boss at the end of this tutorial that you'll have to defeat before moving on to your first multiplayer match, which is against AI. This was neat as it allowed you to test everything you learned from the tutorial on AI before playing against real players. After the tutorial and the AI multiplayer matches, you probably got a decent understanding of the combat gameplay and interface, but I'm sure most of you watching this video haven't played the game. So let's dig into the combat interface and get a better understanding of it. If you have played the game, or even if you haven't, I'd love to hear your thoughts on the game and specifically your favorite mech so far. So please drop a comment down below. The big three things to understand from this combat UI is your ballistics defense, HP, and energy. The ballistics defense is essentially your shield. Once this is gone, any incoming damage will deplete your HP. Now, this shield only protects you from incoming projectiles like bullets and missiles. It will not protect you against melee weapons. All melee weapons directly drain your HP, ignoring your shield altogether. And lastly, your energy is essentially your stamina. The more you fly and thrust around, the faster it depletes. Your abilities also drain this energy. Once you run out, you won't be able to fly, dodge, or use abilities until your energy builds back up. Each mech comes equipped with a main weapon, a sidearm, and three abilities. I won't cover all the mechs in this video, as there's a bunch of them, and that would be a video in and of itself. If that's something you would all like to see, please leave a like and comment letting me know, and I can certainly put that together. One extremely cool feature this game has is this spider chart, used to describe each of the mechs. We will take a look at Welkin's spider chart, for example. These charts consist of seven categories, solo combat, team combat, support, handling, combat range, air combat, and armor. This chart is great in that you can select a mech based on your preferences. For example, we can see Welkin is really good at solo combat and has good armor and handling, but Welkin lacks support and air combat. We can leverage this knowledge in our matches by trying to take one-on-one -on -one fights and specifically one-on-one -on -one fights with a mech that primarily does ballistics damage as we have loads of armor to compensate for that. I know I said I won't cover all the mechs in this video, but I will cover my top three mechs at the moment to give you all an idea of what this game has to offer. So sticking with Woken, as he is my favorite mech at the moment, Woken's main weapon is an assault howitzer. It's a projectile based blast weapon, so it will deplete the shields of the enemy before draining their HP pool. His sidearm is the heavy battle axe. This is a melee weapon, so it will bypass armor and directly start draining the HP of the enemy. When charged, it will unleash this crazy AOE whirlwind attack Wilkin has three abilities, a stasis field, which when used, deploys a rectangular force field blocking all incoming and outgoing attacks. No mech can enter or exit this field. I like to use it to trap another mech inside with me and then AOE them down. Think of it as creating a small arena for you and another mech to fight in. He also comes equipped with a jamming generator, which staggers the target and disables their lock-on and mini-map, and a boomerang drone that deals melee damage to the target and staggers them. So you can quickly see how this mech should be played. Identify your target, isolate them in the stasis field, jam their systems, and melee them to death with your boomerang and battle axe. So far, this dude is extremely fun to play. Another mech I enjoy playing is Stego, the ultra heavy attacker. 
If it's not clear by now, <laughs> I very much enjoy playing tanky characters. This mech has loads of armor and is very good at ranged team combat. They are not so good at solo or air combat. Stego's main weapon is a rocket pod, which fires heavy rockets at the target. His sidearm is a rapid rocket pod, which continuously fires heavy rockets at enemy units. Stego comes equipped with a jamming haze diffuser, cloaking allies and disabling target lock-on and minimap to any enemies within the jamming field. Stego can transform into Reinhardt and Bastion's baby, giving him access to the micro-missile ability, which fires a barrage of missiles at the locked-on target. All of Stego's weapons do projectile-based blast damage, so all damage will be applied to the enemy's shield first before draining their HP. The final mech I will cover in this video is Aquila. This heavy sniper excels at long-range single-target combat. He's rigged with a mobile beam cannon, and instead of a sidearm, this beam cannon has two modes. A sniping mode that does a ton of damage but has a smaller mag and a slow fire rate. This mode activates when you aim down sights. When you are not aimed down sights, you are in the close range mode and deal less damage. This sniper rifle does a different type of damage than blast damage or melee damage. It dishes out energy damage. Aquila also has a defense field that can be activated to block long range attacks. A claw drone that can be sent to a locked on target to paralyze them, making for an easy snipe. And lastly, he has an airborne kit that can be activated to increase Aquila's aerial mobility. The game also has a training range you can test the mech out in before jumping into PvP. Those are my three favorites at the moment. Let me know your favorites in the comments below. After you determine your playstyle and what mech you would like to play, it's time to jump into the battlefield for some PvP. There are five maps in the 6v6 battlefield, each with their own unique game mode. One mode you need to obtain and deliver launch keys. The first team to complete the delivery or be in the lead when the time runs out wins. On Mercury shipyards, you will need to escort a transport vehicle before the enemy team escorts their transport vehicle. Another mode is a round based single life team deathmatch. First team to win two rounds wins the match. In the Cape Block Observatory area, your team will compete against the other team to dismantle as many stratum shatters as possible. And lastly, Crop Sinkhole is pretty much like Domination from Call of Duty, except these aren't flags you capture, they are data nodes. There are three data nodes, and the more you hold, the more points your team gets. Those are all the battlefield modes so far. There's also a mode called Ace Arena. This is not accessible in the beta, but we do know it will be a 3v3 elimination mode. My guess is that Ace Arena will be their highly competitive ranked playlist. I'm all about ranked mode, so I'm definitely looking forward to jumping into that. In addition to everything I just talked about, Mecha Break also allows you to customize your mechs with paint jobs and mods. You can apply paint jobs to your head, arms, body, legs, and weapons. And on top of that, you can apply patterns, graphics, and decals. There is incredible potential here to make some really awesome and badass mechs. Mods essentially apply permanent buffs to your character's stats. These stats being your HP, energy, fluid armor, mobility, stability, fire control system, and weapons. This is where things can kind of get a little strange for me though. Mod parts are broken down into four different tiers. Those being rare, fine, advanced, and then finally top tier. Now, how do we get these mods? Well, while playing the game, you progress through this matrix contract that upon progressing each contract level, you get a paint kit, which contains a random color that can be used to customize your mech. And on the bonus track, you earn supply crates. These supply crates are where you can obtain the mods for your mechs. This is essentially their battle pass. Now, all of this is subject to change, and it's worth saying that we don't know what this will look like when the game comes out. So everything from this point on is my assumption on how this major contract will work. This looks to me like the top track that contains paint kits will be the free track, and the bonus track containing those mod parts will be the premium track for those that buy the battle pass. And this sucks. It just, it just sucks. If this is the case, then the game has definitely paid a win. In my opinion, these crates should just be flipped. Put the cosmetics on the premium track and allow everyone to access the supply crates that contain mods. Again, these are permanent buffs to your mecha stats. Also worth noting that this mech, Inferno, is only obtainable on the bonus contract track. So, not only are the upgrades to enhance your mechs being paywalled, but so are the new mechs that release. Now, it might be similar to Rainbow Six Siege, where if you purchase the battle pass, you get instant access to the new mech, or you can spend your matrix credits that you earn in game on the new mech instead of buying the premium track, similar to Renown from R6. 
I'm still a bit uncertain about this, and we'll need to keep an eye on the game's updates to see when all the Battle Pass details are confirmed before we can really have a solid opinion on it. To end on a lighter note though, the game is incredible. Us gamers are most certainly in need of a badass mecha PvP multiplayer game. There is no shortage of mechs in this game, and each of them are incredibly unique. I didn't run into any outstanding bugs or crashes when playing this game either. It feels and looks polished. The movement is engaging and immersive, and the ground melee combat is everything I could have asked for in a game like this. For those of you that watched the video this far, thanks so much for watching. Please leave a comment describing how you feel about this game, about the battle pass, and all that so far. I would love to read them. If I missed anything important, please share that as well. As of recording, the beta is still live, so I'm going to go and unleash some devastating firepower on my foes. Until next time, take excellent care of yourselves, and goodbye!